Hi, I'm Jason Nichols, and I did my spring internship at the Swasu Strength and Conditioning Center in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And for the description of this place, so it's fairly new, like all the equipment and everything they got in the last five to 10 years. It's mainly free weights, so you got racks with all the weight and all that on it, and then you have a couple of machines. It's got two office spaces. One, as you see here, is one of them. It's got two computers, and then the main office space where the strength and conditioning coach is, it has a uh, computer as well. Bathroom and storage, it's got a uh, girls and a boys bathroom, and it also has a storage unit where there's a bunch of like brooms and trash bags and all that other stuff. So a description of the intern, my internship site was there's 14 racks with all, all of them have row uh, wood boxes next to them. Three cable machines, so for like your lat pull downs, and then it's got a part that extends for like your tricep extensions and your V-bar extensions and your bent over row, cable bent over rows. And then it has seven vertical steel boxes. So instead of like your row boxes where it only goes so high, you got the steel ones that go up. I think it goes up to right here and goes all the way down to like your shin height. It's got two pair of custom Troy dumbbells from five pounds to a hundred. So when I'm gonna say custom, I mean like each of them has like the Swasu emblem on one side and then the dog's emblem on the other side. And there's, it goes from five to a hundred on the left side and five to a hundred on the right side. And then two neck roller machines. These machines are hardly used. It's kind of, they're put over there. Some people use them, but I'm not a big fan of them. They kind of just sit in the way of everything. They're just machines that rotate this way and rotate that way. And you can add weight to the various sides of them. The, the one leg extension machine and two hamstring curl machines is like, so you got your leg extension where you're sitting up and then you got your prone leg, or leg flexion and extension. And then your hamstring curl machines would be like something that a lot of people just use for abs mainly because they use the boxes for your ham curls. But they're, I feel like they're a better source for abs and hamstrings because it's getting the entire pool in it without like someone having to hold you down for it. And then it's got one elliptical, one treadmill, both are pre-core. I think that's a pre-core. That's their brand. And both of them are decently new, as in like last five to 10 years new, but there has never been any problems with them from what I've heard from Coach Jackson, the strength coach, or anybody else. So like I said, this is a fairly new place. Like this is your general rack right here. You've got your 45s, 25s, 10s, 5s, two and a halfs. And this is like also what I'll talk about later about how like aligning stuff and putting the bands up. Bands right there. You got your road box over there. You got your med balls down here. You got your exercise ball. You got your bench. You got your pull ups. And everything and then <clears throat> like I also said it's mainly free weight like you don't see any like machines coming off this because the machines are on this side or that side of the facility and then there's the two there's the office so there's the office for the interns there's the strength conditioning office and then the bathrooms are back there as well as the uh, storage unit so the interns responsibilities is pretty much like picking up after people so like you got to clean the machines and the weights every day because honestly that is crucial because no telling how many people come in here and put their hands on stuff and they're not like doing the other stuff outside of here like washing their hands staying like clean when it comes to just like blowing their nose and then not washing their hands after something like no telling how much is actually on those bars if you don't clean them every day or then weight those weights uh vacuum floor vacuum floor every week to two weeks matters when coach says it mainly needs it the easiest part is going down the lanes because this place is fairly long i'm not sure how many yards it is but it just gets kind of tough when it gets around the racks because all that's when usually guys are like sitting and squatting and stuff and they got grass all over their feet from the stuff we had them do outside or anything other than that another annoying thing you do here is uh pick up the weights and make sure each rack is clean when i say clean i mean like in proper like alignment so like you got your 
two and a halfs on top, fives, tens, 25s, and then 45s on the very bottom. When a lot of people like to like just put weight up and think that it's actually put up when no, they, they didn't leave it better than they found it. So then that's where we come in, like, or interns come in and they have to pick up after people pretty much. And then I have to make sure all the dumbbells are aligned. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about in the next like portion of this video, but it's pretty, pretty annoying when it comes to fixing the dumbbells. And literally it's so easy that people are just lazy enough to where they leave them out or re like align them wrongly. It's like they just don't care. They just leave it for the next person, which I, I don't understand how that even happens. And then the last thing, make sure no bands or jump ropes are left out. So there's bands and jump ropes on every single rack. And usually people will put them up, but a lot of the, or some of the time they'll have them still wrapped around the bit, the bench or the part of the rack that they were using them for. Like you can use your, for your tricep extensions or your abs or like you can even do a payoff press with them. And then the jump ropes as well. Like there's a band thing or there's a rack up here where you can put all your jump ropes, but also you can hang them on the racks uh, where they're you where they're supposed to really go. Okay, so I I've told you about my internship responsibilities and how repetitive it's become and like all this and what I'm talking about when I say pick up your weights and pick up your dumbbells like this is a lot of what happens here. So if you see like it's got Swasu emblem on this side. And this one has a dog's emblem. And on the door, it literally says, clean up your rack, clean up the dumbbells, put them aligned like they're supposed to be. Because when they're all aligned out, they look perfect. And so this is my daily activity. And this also happens a lot with weights being left on the ground, literally right in front of where they're supposed to go. But people, like I said, have gotten lazy about putting up stuff because people have always just came and put it up for them. So th this is literally my job. Okay, my special project was to make a video for Swasu Strength Conditioning that could be sent out with their summer lifting program. It would be pretty much like a walkthrough of how to do all the lifts and all the stretches that will be in on all the workouts that are sent out. So like I got, a, when I first came here, I got a lot of messages and emails about how to do this type of lift or what kind of lift it was or this kind of stretch or what kind of stretch it was. So this video would be like a tutorial for most of the people that are coming in that don't have any idea what's going on here yet that are getting all the summer workout programs from coach and just have no answer to it. Like they don't understand it so they don't even do it. That's when the laziness comes in but this tutorial will be like the gap that fills that just confusion when it comes to the stretches and the lifts. Okay, what I wish I would have known before I started this internship was how repetitive my daily life, like activities would have been. So like I said earlier, like the cleaning up the racks, cleaning up the dumbbells, cleaning up the bands, realigning the dumbbells, realigning bands, realigning the racks, as well as how annoyed I would get with pretty much repeating myself all day, every day saying like, hey, don't forget to re-rack your stuff. Hey, don't forget to realign the dumbbells. Don't forget to put up the bands. Don't forget to put up your rollers. Don't forget to put your mats exactly where they're supposed to be, which is behind the rack where they are every single morning. Another is how to manage my time better. So what I kind of started doing was I started getting lazy when it came to, I'd come in here with teams and after teams, I would like, there'd be like an hour gap that I would just be sitting around doing nothing. And then if I could go back again, I would start where I would work out before my class and then come back and finish a longer portion of my workout after my class was done. And then I wish I would have known how to help more athletes to be competitive from the very beginning. So I started, when I got later on into my internship, I started noticing how once you give athletes more of a competition lift, like how much more they get out of it, how much more fun they have. So like at the beginning, I was, we were just giving them a piece of paper and then having to follow that piece of paper. And then towards the end we started adding all the like body weight to totals up. So like if a guy weighs 185 and his bench max is like in the 300s, like him compared to like a like strongest individual on the team, we had that, we started doing that in teams. 
And so teammates started competing against each other, trying to be the best. And then once they were the best on their team, they were trying to compete with the whole entire athletic campus for Swasu. So it was pretty beneficial towards the end. And if I could go back, I would start that from the very, the very beginning and see where a six months. So my future plans would be to be a GA for the Southwestern baseball team or it honestly matters who the new strength coach is going to be next year to whether or not I could be a GA for him next year. It would all be on who gets the job and when they get the job and all that. And also, if I wanted to, I could be an assistant strength coach for the Weatherford High School. That'd be like, that'd be like my third, third like step, what you would call it, for like my future. But as of right now, the GA for the baseball and the GA for the Swasu strength conditioning facility would be like top priority for me. Okay, some important insights. When entering here, take every advantage you can, like I talked about earlier, how I need to manage my time better, that would probably be best, and how I could do better with all the athletes. And when I say, man, like, take advantage of everything, it comes to training, observing, learning, and and that comes with interning that at this type of facility. So, like, I'm dealing with athletes all day. I'm dealing with people that share the same insights as me, so trying to be, like, better every single day, trying to be great, trying to focus on something other than, like, this campus, trying to go farther. And then the big thing for me would be, like, I need, like, when I bring in on other interns, I would tell them they need to show up every day and bring the energy because what I have noticed is some athletes just come in here and go through the motions and are like just here because they have to be instead of here to get better. And in my mind, that comes from your coaches, your leaders, everybody involved because this should be a place where you come and give everything you have so you can do better on your playing field, not a place you go because you have to. This is a place that not everybody gets to go to. And honestly, this facility is very top of the line. So in my mind, I would be more of like a leader to the guys coming in, be that vocal guy that they needed just so they could push that extra mu like much every day.